What's up, Notre Dame fans? I am Ashton Pollard from blueandgold.com here with our football analyst, Tim Hyde. And today we're going to talk about some newcomers. So we've spent so much time discussing the 2023 and 2024 recruiting classes, offers, recruiting trips, all of that, that we're kind of forgetting that we currently have the number six class in the country on campus now as a complete unit once the um, summer enrollees got here a little over a month ago. So we're going to dive into who we're looking forward to seeing um, ahead of fall camp, which starts on Friday, August 5th. We'll get our first look at about half of the class. Obviously, some were early enrollees, but it's still exciting to see how they've progressed through summer workouts and through through a semester of Bayless, Bayless workouts and a semester of college as we head into the fall. So we'll start there, Tim, with the early enrollees on the offensive side of the ball. Who are you looking forward to getting a second look at? Yes. Well, perfect. You set that up perfect because all we've talked about for months is 2023 quarterbacks and CJ Carr in 2024. So I'm excited to basically the forgotten man, right? Steve and Jelly. So yep. where is he landing? You know, obviously we had really good uh, spring, great spring great game, the great fourth quarter comeback. How does that go into this summer? Does he really push Drew Pine for the number two? And then Where's Steve Angeli going to fit down the road? Because everyone wants to talk about C.J. Carr, but before C.J. shows up, he will have two full seasons under uh, this regime here in the Freeman era. So let's don't forget about Steve Angeli moving forward. Yeah, absolutely. And especially with the question marks around the 2023 quarterback situation, Steve Angeli might need to uh, be thrown a little bit into the fire there more than maybe we expected, say, yeah. six months ago. Um, how about on the defensive side of the ball with the early enrollees? Yeah, with the defense, it's uh, one who had a great spring and one was kind of left left off the side. And that's, uh, you know, Junior Tuli Alamaca, who had an amazing spring. And I'm going with his cohort, you know, Jalen Sneed, who was the big five star that they got. And I picked these two as these were Freeman recruits. These were the first two Marcus Freeman went and got as DCs, right. got Junior away from USC in Southern California. And then the connection with Jalen Sneed, his coach and getting him away from all those SEC schools. I'm really curious to see where they are because, you know, you know, people forget there. There's four senior linebackers in Kaiser, Bertrand, you know, Maris Leofau, and then obviously Bo Bauer is a grad. So right. all four could be gone. And if they are, if none of them come back for a fifth year, then these two are going to have to be big, uh, big stars come 2023. Yeah, it's a very good point. We're, we're talking about how much linebacker depth there is because there's so many upperclassmen, but that's that's great for the next four months. But then what happens when they leave? All right, let's switch over to the summer enrollees that arrived in early June. There are some big names that we were talking about before we hopped on here that they were kind of overshadowed just because some of the big names were also early enrollees and we got a close look at them then. But uh, there's still some guys that just that just showed up. So Tim, on the offensive side of the ball, who are you looking forward to getting your first look at? Yeah, offensively was, you know, I think one of the best players in the class, and that's tight end Holden Stays. You know, I went back and rewatched some of these kids, you know, film once again. And, you know, people forget how good Holden was as a really good receiving tight end. Right. And he was a big time defensive end as well. So he was a two way guy. And obviously, all the SEC schools wanted him, and Notre Dame got him, got him out of the great state of Georgia. So, and then we've been talking a thousand times over the last six months about, is there a second tight end? There's been injuries. You know, everyone knows Mayor's right. going to leave after this season. So does Holden. Obviously, Eli, Eli Raritan's in there as well. But I'm I'm really curious to see what Holden does because I just love his athleticism and the physicality he plays. Is he kind of that surprise in this group that really not a lot of people have been talking about? And does he step in? Yeah, and he's kind of the one outside of Mayer that's coming in not having a major injury in the last year or so. Kane Barong had an ACL tear. Eli Riordan had, had an ACL tear. Um, they've both been cleared and should be okay to go at least a little bit. But then you also have Kevin Bauman, who had a broken leg. He came back toward the end of last season. But mm -hmm. there's kind of been talk, is, does that have a lingering effect on his play? So Holden's kind of the, the fresh, young spring chicken coming in here with no injuries. And as you said, he was very highly rated. He was a top 10 tight end in the country. I believe yep. we had him number nine um, overall at the position. So, yeah, he got a little he got a little overshadowed there, but but certainly a big name. And how about on defense with the, uh, with the group that just arrived? 
Yeah, defense. You know, I went back and actually when me and Mike Singer did it, you know, the, on the our show on the uh, National Signing Day in February, the real National Signing Day, right? Uh, you know, my hidden <laughs> gem, so to speak, exactly. My my sleeper was Benjamin Morrison, yeah. really good football player out of uh, Arizona. Pac-12 wanted him all over the place. And uh, he's another one of those guys. Everyone's talking about Jaden Mickey, obviously the sophomores, a, a ton of them on there, but you know, Coach Mickens has gone out and recruited really good 23s. This 22 class that's now all together, some good football players. And then I'm looking at this as Morrison is, is I would love to hear, is he a corner or are they moving him to safety? And I say safety because once again, uh, 2022, you got Houston Griffith, DJ Brown, Brandon Joseph, all leaving. Only, you know, only a couple safeties coming back and Watts Henderson and uh, Justin Walters in that sophomore group. So, what do they do with Benjamin Morrison moving forward? And, you know, really curious. He's a heck of a football player and uh, played some big time competition. Yeah, he did. And his his dad was an NFL player too, right? I, I believe. You know, I don't know about that. I've I never heard that. I think he was. Don't quote yep. me on that, but I'm pretty sure that he was. I hope that's not wrong. I don't no. know where I would have gotten that from with him specifically if that didn't. I don't know. Anyways. Um, yeah. So then they will all go through fall camp together and then they will all go to Columbus, presumably on September 3rd, who of that group or any of the other freshmen do you expect will most likely see some playing time in some form in Columbus? Well, uh, you know, a couple, obviously, you know, right off the bat, uh, one group I'm really excited about are the, are the four freshman linebackers. Yep. That's number one. I want to see, you know, I'm counting Burnham. I know he's a Viper, but counting him in that linebacker group, I'd love to see those four on special teams somewhere. Number one, those were Marcus Freeman's guys. As soon as he was the D.C., he went out and personally got these guys. His first game, love to see those four guys uh, running down the field, talking about Burnham, Ziegler, you know, Julie Alamaca, and uh, and Jalen Sneed somewhere. But the two main ones that we heard about in spring and so far the reports in the summer are Jaden Mickey on defense and Tobias Merriweather on offense. Tobias, obvious reasons. They need wide receivers. They need some guys to step up. And it's Tobias, that guy who is a nationally ranked guy, really good football player, tall, lean, faster than people thought. So I'm hoping I wouldn't be surprised if he's in the mix come, you know, come the game in Columbus because of some of the other injuries with Wilkins is Davis fully back. Right. And knock on wood, no one gets dinged up in camp. So, but I would say Tobias on offense and Jaden Mickey, you know, he was the talk of the the spring from the DBs and right. he was already in the battling with the corners and playing a ton of nickels. So I would expect those two freshmen to, to play a lot uh, game one there against Ohio state. And those two, you kind of alluded to this, but those two are getting a lot of hype for being uh, two of the fastest on the team. Yeah. So that, yeah, they, they came in. I know Meriwether's very tall. Um, so may, so it doesn't show up right away how fast he is, but you give him a longer route and, and he'll, he'll pick up a lot of speed and he could be an issue <laughs> for, yes. for, um, a lot of defensive backs, which it'd be good to have an issue against the Ohio state secondary, which I think is going to be a lot better than it was last year. So, um, yep. All right. Well, thank you for joining us before you hop off here. Make sure you hit the thumbs up, subscribe, subscribe to our channel. And as we head into fall camp, we'll have tons more information on blueandgold.com um, and you'll get some quick live up, not live, but some quick um, updates right after practice on the message boards too. You can join for a dollar, get all the access to that. And I know we didn't talk a ton about recruiting on here, but a lot of recruiting information still coming out on those message boards too. So make sure you um, sign up and we will see you on the next one.